Aliens in the Mind. Co-starring Vincent Price as Professor Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God to take unto himself the soul of our brother Hugh. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes. In the sure hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's that then. Well, we'll be missing him, Doogie. The doctor. Twenty years he's been with us. Aye. Do you know that fellow at the graveside? I've never seen him before. Oh, I don't doubt we'll know him soon enough. Aye. The ministers await him already. Old Donald School has not wanted to let a stranger pass his gate. Part one. Island Genesis. Good day to you, sir. I'm Donald Schooler, the minister here. And you'd be... John Cornelius. Uh, a relative of the doctor's, maybe? No, just a friend. A very old friend. And uh, have you travelled far? From London. I had hoped to be here for the inquest. Uh, that was this morning. Accidental death, of course. Tragic. Yes. Could you tell me how he... I mean, I, I read that he fell from a cliff. I last Friday night. Uh, there was a heavy fog over the island. We get a lot of it coming in from the sea at this time of the year. It seems he wandered off the cliff path. He was found at the foot of Drochna Head, 460 feet. I see. You uh, know there's no boat back to the mainland until tomorrow. Oh, yes, but I'm told there's an inn. Oh, oh no, you're welcome to stay at the manse. Well, that's, that's very kind of you, Not I... at all, I insist. Well, thank you. Hi, Mary, my housekeeper. We'll be glad to see a new face around the place. Mm -hmm. Mary! Is that you, Minister? We have a guest, Mary, Mr. Oh. Cornelius. I'm glad to meet you. An old friend of the doctor's. Oh. It's a sad day, sir. He was such a, a fine man. Uh, Mr. Cornelius can have the front guest room, Mary, can he not? Aye. Is that all you have with you, just the one wee bag? It's quite adequate, I assure you. Ah, we'll leave it with Mary, Mr. Cornelius. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll weigh up and uh, give the room an airing. Now, you'll take a wee dram, just to warm you. A little whiskey would be most welcome, thank you. Oh, uh, sit yourself down, Mr. Cornelius. Make yourself at home. That's most kind. Thank you. Was it uh, long since you'd seen him, the doctor? It must be three or four years, I suppose. We wrote occasionally and kept promising to meet, but with the distance and pressure of work, well, you know how it is. I, I, I can well imagine. Ah, here. Thank you. And here's a health to you. God bless. And had you been... Uh, Corresponding lately uh, with the doctor? No, I haven't heard from him for quite a while. Ah, oh, that's better. And he was your oldest friend, you see. Well, one of them. We were inseparable in the old days, you and I and a man called Curtis Lark. Curtis Lark? <laughs> that's rather a quaint name. Rather a quaint man, I suppose. American, of course. Mm. The three of us were together at the same hospital. You're not free from aircraft noise, even up here, Mr. Schooner. Oh, a helicopter from the naval training station. It's not usual for them to fly so low. Uh, since you were at the same hospital, I take it you are also a, a medical man? Yes. Uh, should I not be addressing you as Dr. Cornelius, then? No, I'm a surgeon. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. 
Hey, you'll be a, a specialist of some sort. Oh, yes, I'm a brain surgeon. Didn't you have a housekeeper? Uh, Molly Kyle, I. Oh, a fine woman. Uh, she was at the service. Do you think she'd mind if I went up to the house? Oh, I'm sure she'd expect it. Uh, why not now? Before, uh, before it gets dark. I'd be glad to walk you over there myself. Oh, that's very kind of you, Minister. Come along then, Mr Cornelius. Oh, uh, if you could just wait a moment, I'd better tell Mary we're going out. Certainly. I'll be outside stretching my legs. Half past. Hmm. Two minutes slow. What the devil? Poor child, what is the matter? She's calling them. She's calling them again. Calling who, my dear? The fellowship. She's calling them away from the fire. Oh, stop her. Stop her or they'll die too. Who will die? Who will die? You will. Come here, my dear. What is your name? Laura. Laura, come inside at once. Oh, no, Minister. I'm all right. I'm not hearing her voice. I'm not. I'm not. I'm sorry, Mr. Cornelius. I hope Laura wasn't bothering you. This seems to be one of her bad days. What's wrong with her? Sick in the head, I'm afraid. Mental disorientation, the doctor called it. Is she receiving any treatment? Prayer and faith in the Lord is the best possible treatment, Mr. Cornelius. Many of the young folk on Lewig come here troubled in spirit, and within a year or so, they're completely cured. That's why their parents send them to me. Really? Are you a faith healer, then? No, Mr. Cornelius. I am just the shepherd to my flock. Now, shall we walk across to the doctor's house? Please. It's just a few minutes over the headland. This is Drochna Head, Mr. Cornelius. Was it here that Hugh fell? Ah, down on those rocks. Seems rather a long way to have strayed from the path. Twenty-four feet, according to the coroner. Ooh, he must have walked this way hundreds of times. I mean, you'd have thought... That... Uh, it was quite a fog we had that night. Even so, the path here is worn to the bare rock. But the moment you stray towards the edge, it's all grass, thick grass. He was drunk, Mr. Cornelius wasn't said at the inquest, of course, but everyone here is of the opinion that poor Dr. Dexter had taken a drop too much that night. That doesn't sound a bit like you. Hey, wait, what's that? What, where? Down there, on the beach. You see? Oh, yes, there is someone down there. Ah, he's taking the cliff path up towards the doctor's house. Come along. We'll no doubt run into him further along. Much bigger than I expected. Ah, this was his surgery, a dispensary, and the living quarters as well. Oh, hello, Minister. Hello, Molly. Oh, this is Mrs. Kyle. Good afternoon, Mrs. Kyle. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, this is Mr. Cornelius, Molly. He was a friend of the doctor's. Oh, hi. Hello there. What? And who is this now? Good Lord, it's Curtis Locke. Where on earth did he spring from? Hello, John. How are you? I'm fine, but how did you get here? <sighs> by passenger jet, private charter plane, and finally by one of your Royal Navy's helicopters. Am I in time? Not for Hugh's funeral, if that's what you mean. Well, I did try, but I was in wildest Borneo when I got the news. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me introduce you. Professor Curtis Lark... The minister, the Reverend Donald Schooler. Professor. And Mrs. Kyle, Hughes housekeeper. Hello. Uh, will you not come inside, gentlemen? Oh, thank you. After you, John. Go straight into the study, if you would. If you would excuse me, Molly. Aye. You'll be wanting to get back for the fellowship meeting. Fellowship? The fellowship of the Kirk. Oh. I'll see you later then, minister. Aye, back at the manse. Good day to you, Professor. A bientôt, Minister. 
Hmm. Early Edwardian walnut. Hardly used taste, I would have thought. If it's the furniture you're talking about, he bought it with the practice. It used to belong to old Dr. Mingy's before. Uh, there's a picture over here that you'll maybe recognise. Oh, yes, the class photograph. I think you're both there on it somewhere. The second row left with Hugh standing between us. Look. I can still remember the day when it was taken. Oh, was it really 20 years ago? No, it was nearer 30. Oh, my goodness. Well, all things considered, we still look remarkably young. All things considered, Curtis, you probably need glasses. Oh, <laughs> we're none of us getting any younger, sir. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Kyle, did you, I mean, did the doctor ever wear glasses? Aye. He had a pair made last year, just for reading, you know. What time was it when the doctor went out last Friday? I wasn't here that night, sir. I was over to the mainland to visit relatives. Oh, I see. So you wouldn't know if he had been drinking at all? No, sir. I'm afraid not. Uh-huh. Uh, can I get you gentlemen something to eat? Oh, that's an excellent idea. <laughs> I had breakfast somewhere, but I've quite forgotten where or even when it oh, was. <laughs> you must be starved. I'll uh, away to see to it now. Oh, thank you. You're most kind. Dear, dear John, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you again. My dear fellow, I'm glad to see you too, and surprised. Surprised? I'm astonished. It's less than a week since Hugh's death was announced. It's quite incredible that you managed to get here from, where was it? The wilds of Borneo? John, I, I wasn't in Borneo. Oh? No, that was just for the minister's benefit. Ah. I'd left Borneo two days before on my way here. And when I heard the news of Hugh's death, I was actually making a stopover in Sydney, Australia. You see, I received this letter from Hugh. Uh, look, you'd better read it here. Thank you. <clears throat> My dear Curtis, please read this scribble indulgently because it's extremely difficult for an island vegetable like me to keep a steady leaf between lines, eh? Well, it doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, it does. Don't you remember that silly code we devised when we suspected that horse-faced matron of opening our mail? Oh, good Lord, yes. Let me see now. Uh, first two, wasn't it? Right. First two and last two words in every sentence. That's right. Now you try it again. Ah, I know. Please read the last two. Between lines. Right. A terrible danger here. You must... Help me. Message ends. A terrible danger here. It's as though he knew he was going to die. And who was going to kill him? You can't be serious. Well, he obviously thought his mail was being intercepted. You can't suspect the postman. I don't even know the postman. Well, then. And I hardly know Mrs. Kyle any better. Oh, now, that's preposterous. Well, someone was checking Hugh's mail. It doesn't follow that they killed him. Or indeed that anyone killed him. John... I found this pair of glasses on the beach. Show them to me. They're reading glasses. Oh, I can see that, but they're not necessarily huge. Well, they were just about where his body would have been. Well, surely they would have been in a case. Hugh certainly had a case for them, John. Look, it's right there on the desk. Empty. But it still doesn't prove anything. Not in a court of law, perhaps. But it's proof enough for me. You can't really believe that Hugh, or anyone else for that matter, would walk along a dangerous clifftop at night in thick fog with a pair of reading glasses stuck on his nose. It's just not possible. According to the minister, the general opinion is that Hugh was drunk that night. John, that's not possible either. Why? Well, he swore off liquor the night his wife died. Besides... I've seen the autopsy report. When? I made a courtesy call on the coroner earlier today before I arranged for the helicopter to bring me over. But that's not a lie. I know, I know. I think perhaps he was overwhelmed by my medical reputation. I'm amazed. 
Perhaps we could come to the point, Curtis? The point, my dear John, is that according to the autopsy report, there was absolutely no trace of alcohol in the body. Not in the stomach, not in the blood, not in the urine. None whatsoever. Mm. Curiouser and curiouser. Gosh, if we could only... If we could only find something positive. What did you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. Some notes, a diary, a letter he never dared send, anything. But where do we start to look? Well, presumably where no one else would think of looking. You think he hid something? I certainly hope so. I would have done it in his place. Oh, yes, I'm sure you would. But don't just stand there, John. Try those filing cabinets. Oh, very well. There's nothing much in the desk. I'll try these cupboards over here. Just medical reports here. What you'd expect, really. Hey, there's a cassette recorder in here. I thought Hugh was a hi-fi man. Well, he was. I can't imagine what sort of music he had. Oh. Scottish folk music, sea chanties, the Boston Pops. Never. Oh, no, definitely not his scene. If he had wanted light relief, he would have chosen Vivaldi or Scarletti. And certainly not on a cassette. He was too much of a purist. Oh. Let's move it on a bit. No, no, no. Not far enough yet. I've recorded there this message for John Cornelius consultant surgeon to the London Encephalic Hospital, or for Professor Curtis Lark of the New York Institute of Paranormal Phenomena. I must admit from the start that all my research records disappeared when my study was burgled earlier in the year. Construe that how you will. All that now remains is a notebook of my observations, which I have lodged for safekeeping with our old friend, Ward Locke. Who? Well, do you know anyone named Locke? I don't. The only Locke I know had the misfortune to be an encyclopedia. What are you talking about? Ward Locke's medical encyclopedia. John, you're a genius, an unsung genius. Yes, but we tend not to sing about it on this side of the Atlantic, you know. <laughs> Locke, Locke, Locke. That black tome, dear boy, over on the left. Ah, uh, here it is. Locke's Medical Encyclopedia. Oh, do open it, Curtis. It won't bite you. Well, look at that. A hollow's been cut into the center of the pages. Yes, but what's inside? His notebook. What else? Ah. I've just returned Maud Locke to, as you would say, his appointed place in the order of things. Yes, but you'd better let me have that notebook. You're always losing things. I'll put it in my pocket. Damn it, I've even lost the playback button on this infernal we'll machine. One. All right. All right. There we are. If you can find time to contact Ward Locke, you will see that my observations have led me to believe that this island is in the throes of giving birth to a new race, a mutant species. Physically, they are human, but my EEGs suggest that their brain is quite different from ours. I know for a fact that they are capable of some form of telepathy. It is the development of this telepathic power during early adolescence that is directly responsible for the high incidence of mental disorientation among the younger people on the island. Almost invariably, the clinical symptoms in these cases seem to disappear within about a year. Schoolers, prayer and faith in the Lord. What's that supposed to mean? The minister cures them, or so he claims. The island of sickness, he calls it. What Hugh's describing sounds more like an, an island genesis. Yes, I know. Look, switch it on again. All right. The single exception to this rule is a girl whose development seems to have been arrested in the middle of her own personal metamorphosis, as it were, so that she retains all the disorientation symptoms. Logically, one would have expected a complementary arrest in the development of her brain, but her EEG suggests that her brain may, in fact, be better developed than anyone else's. She has proved able, on occasions, to disrupt the telepathic communication of other mutants. And this is what frightens me. To implant her own thoughts 
in their minds. It is my belief that she may be a second phase mutant, the prototype of a genetically selected master race. Her name is Flora Keary. Pray God she is only the prototype. If there are others like her, the whole future of mankind as we know it could be threatened. My God. Well, at least we know why Hugh died. Dr. Oh, Dexter. Mrs. Kyle. I, I, I thought I heard the doctor. Well, you did, Mrs. Kyle. But it was only a tape recording. Sit down, Mrs. Uh, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I can understand it. It must have given you quite a turn. Uh, look, you'd better drink this. Hmm? Thank you. Oh, oh. What a nasty taste. Well, it shouldn't be. It said pure malt on the label. Go on, drink it up. Oh, my heart's still pounding. I, I just wasn't expecting it, you know. You rest for the moment. You'll soon feel better. Yes, now look, uh, this will help you to relax. Oh. Hmm? I'm feeling quite dizzy No, no, no. Don't get up. Uh, Don't get up. Just rest there. Oh, oh. oh, the poor woman's fainted. It must be the shock. Oh, don't be an ass, John. I slipped her what is euphemistically known as a Mickey Finn. A Mickey? <laughs> it's no smell. What on earth was it? There was a curare derivative. Out in Borneo, there's a tribe of headhunters who use it as a local anesthetic. Very interesting, John, but hardly relevant. Unless you intend taking Mrs. Kyle's head as a trophy. <laughs> no, but she may intend taking mine, or yours, for that matter. Let's be quite clear about our situation, John. Hugh was killed, presumably by mutants, because he knew too much about them. If they discover how much we know, we won't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting off this hive. But you surely don't suspect Mrs. Kyle of being a mutant? Until such time as we learn how to distinguish mutants from non-mutants, I intend, in the interest of self-preservation, to suspect everyone on this island of being a mutant. Curtis, I met a girl called Flora earlier today uh -huh. at the manse, the minister's house. She was about 18, I should think. Well past the age of puberty, anyway. Now, she had all the symptoms of the case that you spoke of. The second phase mutant, huh? It could be. Where are you off to now? To the manse, of course. That girl's our only lead. Uh, what about Mrs. Kyle? Oh, she'll sleep it off in about a half hour or so. Are you coming? Uh, just collecting the cassette? Ah, uh, very good thinking, my dear John. Thank you. Right. Now let's go. I'm coming. Look, Curtis. Something's going on in the church. The lights are on. Must be some sort of service. The fellowship meeting. Yes, that's right. The minister mentioned it. So did Flora. She said something about calling them away from the fire. What fire? I don't know. Well, then I think it's time we found out. Come on. John, give me a leg up. Hmm? I want to do a little surreptitious eavesdropping. Steady, John, steady. You're overweight, damn it. All those hot dogs. Well, let me down. It was the greatest of pleasure. There are rows and rows of them in there, just sitting there like so many zombies. Listen. Servant of the devil. His work is Satan's handiwork. Should be cast into outer darkness. All unto everlasting hellfire. Those people make the Spanish Inquisition sound like a parlor game. If the devil's handiwork were consumed in eternal hellfire, and I would not move from the house of God to save it. Hey. And the ashes should be cast. Curtis, there's a fire up there on the hill. Ooh, 
What a fire. It looks like the whole house has gone up in flames. Hugh's house? Yes. I just remembered something. What? When I talked to Flora, she said that if I didn't stop her calling them away from the fire, I'd die too. You? I didn't understand at the time, but I do now. They wanted us to be in that house. And they would just sit there in their church and let us quietly burn to death. <laughs> what? Uh, who's, who's that? Flora, what are you doing here? Waiting for her to die. Her? Mrs. Kyle. She's up there in that inferno, probably still unconscious. No, she's awake now. Flora, what's going on in the church? She is calling them, calling them to the fire. Listen. Oh, my God! Something's wrong! Quick! Save her! We must go! Where did you get No! Stay where you are! Stay! 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 Go! Go! We must go! Let it burn! Let it burn! No! No! We must go and put it out! Do not move! Do not move! We must go! The long, desolate body on innocent is body! calling them. Why didn't they go? Because I was telling them to stay. Why, Flora, why? Because now Louis is mine. <laughs> Louis is mine. <laughs> so Mrs. Kyle was a second phase mutant, too. You realize what that means? Yes, it it means that Flora isn't just a prototype. Hugh's so-called master race has, has been with us for at least 50 years. 50 years? Three generations? And God said, go forth and multiply. That was part one of Aliens in the Mind, co-starring Vincent Price as Curtis Lark and Peter Cushing as John Cornelius, with Henry Stamper as Donald Skula, Sandra Clark, Flora Curie, Shirley Dixon, Mrs. Kyle, Irene Sutcliffe, Mary, and Fraser Carr, Dr. Hugh Dexter. Aliens in the Mind was written by Rene Basilico from an idea by Robert Holmes. Production by John Dias.